Good morning. I hope you're ready for a leg day because I am not. But I'm still in a good mood, even though we're training glutes. Today I'm gonna guide you, walk you through my entire glute and hamstring workout. It has helped me to grow my glutes immensely. We're starting off with the most important exercise, which is, of course, hip thrust. And I'm doing them today on the Smith machine, because for the longest time I was setting up for hip thrust, I was setting up the entire barbell, the bench, the entire setup was a workout on its own. And I did this every single session. And one day I was like, why am I doing this if I can do them on the Smith machine? I already have my bench and I already have the barbell set up in a way that I need it. And I put my barbell pad on it just to make a test without the weight, because nothing is more annoying when you have the bench set up and you put on the weights and then you realize that the bench is not at the right position. Always make sure to check it without the weights first. I'm planning on doing three sets, although one warm-up set and then three sets or three sets in total. I'm not sure yet. I usually decide after the third set if I'm in the mood <laughs> for another set. So as you can tell, the bench is definitely way too high for me. I always make this little <laughs> scooping thing here. I have my shoulder blades on the bench, feet in a 90 degree angle, shoulder width apart, toes pointing outwards, one, two, three. Chin tucked, squeeze on top of the movement, breathing out. The way I decide whether I can take more weight is how easy my last one to two reps are. So now, unfortunately, <laughs> they were a little bit too easy. So we need to take more weight. We really want to be struggling on those last one to two reps. Also, tip, when you're on top of the movement, don't over arch your back. Because sometimes I had the feeling I need to push more on top because this is like the important movement, right? Squeezing your glutes on top. But when I over arch my back and I go too up high, I can feel my lower back. So if you have lower back pain, maybe you're just over arching on top of the movement. But this is where I like to stop and not also, you can do hip thrust like this, where you move your entire upper body or scoop a little bit more, which I actually do prefer. I feel like my glutes are burning more if I'm scooping. I put on some 10 kgs on each side, nothing crazy, but just a little bit more than before. <laughs> Placing my shoulders on the bench, feet shoulder width apart, toes pointing outwards. I don't want to do this. Okay, one, two, three. Squeeze, hold it. Okay, let's do one more set. We're counting the first set. The first set was hard, but we're taking a little bit more weight again. I think I'm gonna add five kgs to both sides. Okay, last set, we're gonna push it. We're gonna give our all. One, two, three. <laughs> that counts, that counts. It's the effort. The reason I started with my hip thrust is, well, number one, to get them out of the way. <laughs> Second reason is because I want to get my heaviest lift on my hip thrust. So whatever exercise you have where you want to have your heaviest lift on, hip thrust, squats, leg press, deadlifts, or an upper body day, maybe you want to finally do a pull-up, start with the pull-ups. Always start with the exercise first. Where you want to lift your absolute heaviest, because this is when you have the most energy. Usually now I would do my barbell RDLs, but since we're already in the Smith machine, I was like, let's do reverse lunges. <laughs> I don't know why, I, I absolutely hate reverse lunges, I think even more than hip thrusts, but I've been doing Bulgarian split squats for so long. I need to switch it up. We're gonna do a little test without the weights, just to make sure that we have correct form. Always start off with your wiggle leg. I have the bar on my shoulders, not on my neck here. You can also have it lower if you like, but I like to have the placement right here. Elbows back and then going back. Making sure that you have the stretch here, pushing up with your working leg. So what I was struggling with for the longest time with reverse lunges was balance and also my knees. Instead of going here, like straight down in a line, try to be a little bit more on the side. 
like so. Not here, straight, a little bit more on the side. You're gonna notice how much easier movement is gonna be and it's also gonna be better for your knees. Also, if you're struggling with stability, this is why I like to do this movement on the Smith machine because you don't have to focus on the stability, you can just focus on the movement. Let's do some weights. We're doing three sets, eight reps, each leg. I think it's gonna be too heavy, but let's see, let's see. Okay, other leg. You can take a rest if you want to, but I want to get it over with. <laughs> so I go straight in with the second leg. Okay, I didn't think this would happen, but I need a little bit more weight. Second set. Halfway. Why am I doing this? Two more. <laughs> Okay, without exaggerating, I think I almost died. Take your rest time in between sets, one to two minutes. Rather two minutes, I don't think I ever only take one minute. Dipping on some water. Okay, let's do the last set to get it over with. Okay, one, two, three. This is actually not the best idea, so please, please don't do that. Next we're doing barbell RDLs, which I would usually do after my hip press, but like I said, I want to do both exercises on a Smith machine. Even when I'm doing it with the barbell, like when I do barbell hip press, barbell RDLs, I like to do both exercises back to back, because you never know if the squat drag is free afterwards or if the Smith machine is free afterwards. So I like to combine two exercises on the same machine or on the barbell together. We're doing a test only with the barbell to make sure we're having correct form. Shoulder blades down, making sure that your core is engaged and then you're pushing back with the hips. Until you feel like your lower back is taking over, which would be for me around here. I don't like to go too low because then I can definitely feel it in my lower back. So I go a little bit below my knees where I can feel the most stretch. And then I pull up with my glutes again. And what I like to focus on is pulling through my heels and really squeezing the glutes. Not going too far up, but like here where I can still feel tension and then going back down again. Okay, let's do some weights. I use my lifting straps because I have <laughs> very weak wrists. If I don't use them, I feel like all I focus on is holding the barbell and not <coughs> stretching my glutes, working my glutes. So if you do any exercise and you feel like all you can focus on is holding the barbell or even lat pull downs or whatever you're doing, and you could lift more, but you struggle with your wrist strength, use the lifting straps. I always felt bad for it, but I'm not training my wrists. I want to train my glutes or my back or whatever I'm training that days. We're starting with a moderate weight, heavy weight, not too heavy. One, two, three. That was definitely heavy, but unfortunately not heavy enough. Okay, second set. Let's do this. A little bit more weight. One, two, three. If you feel like you're stuck on the same weight, what I like to do is I take this 1.21, 1, 125 kg. They're very small, it's not a lot of weight, but we're slowly increasing our weight without hurting ourselves or without hurting our form. I don't think I ever mentioned it, but we're doing three sets of eight reps. We're doing pretty much everything three sets, eight reps, because I don't know, for some reason that's the way I only started training and never went back to the 10 reps, 12 reps. Okay, last set. It was definitely heavier. It was definitely heavier. Okay, last exercise. Hyperextension. I love doing them at the end of my workout and really burn out my glutes. So the way I like to structure my workouts or my leg days is usually my heavy exercises like hip thrust, barbell, RDLs usually. At the beginning, one single leg exercise like reverse lunges, Bulgarian split squats, and then I like to do some glute 
isolation. Cable kickbacks are amazing. I love the hyper extension and what I also sometimes like to do is do the lying leg curl and do the hyper extension. But I just made a video on this so I was like let's just do the hyper extension today. So oh. <laughs> there was like do you see that automatic movement because usually I have my headphones in and this is the first thing I do. I always fix my headphones because they do fall right off. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> So I take the plate in the middle here and then, oh my gosh, this is heavy, maybe a little bit too heavy. And we're going up until you can feel your glutes, not too far up because then it's going to be a lower back exercise or a back exercise. I don't like to go too heavy on this exercise because I feel like if you do too much weight, you're just having incorrect form and you're not squeezing where you should be squeezing. So what I like to do is I arch my back a little bit. And then I can feel it way better in my glutes. If you've never done this exercise and you really want to try it because it is amazing for your glutes, do it with body weight because you want to really squeeze your legs into the machine and really feel your hamstrings and your glutes in the back burning. What I really like to do with this exercise is slowing it down. I mean, I like to slow down all exercises, focus on the mind to muscle connection. I feel like when I train slower and more mindful, I always have a better feeling after the workout. I always feel, I don't want to say more sore because soreness is not a, soreness doesn't say anything about how good your workout was, but I always feel my muscles so much better after workout if I slow down and really focus on my mind to muscle connections. So that's what I wanted to say. This is the last exercise. So usually I do it in a superset, but today I didn't want to do a superset. And I always do then, if I do a superset, like with the lying, hams, lying hamstring curls, I do two sets of the hamstring curls and two sets of the hyper extension. And I'm like, done. So I'll be doing three sets today. And did I say how many reps? Like about 10 reps. Or you do it until failure, which is also very fun. This was not good. You can probably see that my form wasn't amazing. For the last set, we're doing only 10 kgs. Last, last set, last exercise. Final of everything for today, thank God. Okay. This was only eight reps, but honestly, my muscles, they are, they're tired. Probably wasn't my best form today on the hyperextension, but it's fine. And like you saw, I don't do a lot of exercises. I did four exercises today. And when I do the lying leg curl, it's one exercise more. And we're doing it in a super set and only two sets, whatever. Long story short, I don't do a lot of exercises on my leg day. I used to do it overkill, do way too many exercises on my leg days, especially heavy exercises like deadlifts, squats, hip thrusts, everything. There's no need in doing it because your muscles are just going to be tired and you won't see more gains or anything or more growth. Four to five exercises are more than enough, especially if you really push yourself on each exercise and structure your workout, like starting with the compound movement, with the heavy movement, single leg exercise, and then some glute isolation. This workout takes me about an hour, an hour 15, depending on the day. I'm very exhausted. <laughs> my glutes and my hamstrings are burning. So that was my glutes and hamstring day. Subscribe if you want to see more workout videos and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.